Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Bahrain Now with me, Bara Abdullah. We've got a great show lined up full of local talents, initiatives, and events from around the kingdom. All this and more right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, to all the gamers, pop culture fanatics, and wrestling fans out there, put your controllers down, put everything down for this segment as we welcome to the studio the founder of the For Geeks Eyes Only YouTube channel, Iyad. Pretty much the guy who's behind a very cool YouTube channel that you got to know more about it right here at the studio. So good evening, Iyad. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me here today. Oh man, it is a long one coming for a long time. We needed to have you here, definitely. Thank As you. to me, I think you're one of the pillars of what made Bahrain pretty much have a transition to the pop culture scene. You are one of the, those pillars, you know? Like a hidden gem, I would say. But tell us more about your YouTube channel. Uh, that's high praise to stand for. And uh, you humbled me, to be honest. I'm really good, as you mentioned. I have a YouTube channel for Geek Size Only. And uh, I started around 2014, but I probably wrote down my ideas for the channel around mm. 2010. I wrote down a lot of ideas about not just the content, but the vibe I wanted for the right. channel and the style basically for the channel. And a lot of those ideas uh, I didn't even uh, do because they got, I scrapped them out of the plan. New ideas came in and as soon as I started, I found out y you learn more and you want to add more ideas. So right. it, till today, I'm adding new ideas, new things, new ideas and new styles. And I change, you know, you have to change it a lot. Oh, totally, man. But I saw you, I mean, me being one of the fans of your channel and seeing you in all the, I would say, gaming, pop culture, wrestling events taking place in Bahrain, <clears throat> you became like a reference to a lot of people, but not only locally, even at some point, I would say regionally and even globally. Some of the stuff you do, it's like you don't go just following the trends. You are your own trend at this point, I guess, right? You do retro gaming. You pretty much go to the oldies, but you dig deep into the, I would say, the technicality, the story behind why things are happening. Why is that thing happening with your channel? Why do you like to do that? Uh, when I first started, I checked out a lot of channels. Right. Just to know what are they doing and what are they not doing. And I kind of focused on that. Over here in the region, there weren't many people talking about the how can i put the strange games weird right. games the history nobody was talking about hi history right. back then so that's kind of where i focused and i tend to focus a lot on weird things that are not common mm. and sometimes like that's the best the best compliment i could get like a, a comment the best comment i can get is wow i never heard of this but right. i love it so much now oh or, yeah this is so weird but i love it yeah i mean one of your, I would say, reports is uh, a wrestler, Abdul. Abdul al yes. Dude, dude, that was something else. Like, you literally went out there, you collected everything that can be collected, and you put it all in one show. So what was your drive to do that? Okay, uh, I mentioned that in the video, but that video alone, I started writing it or collecting data for it since 2018. 18? Yeah, and I released it this, this year, and it was my first English video. So okay. this is my second channel now. Amazing. And I took everything I learned from my first channel, which is like eight years of experience, mm. and I put it in that video alone. So I poured a lot of love and a lot of uh, things went into that video. So when you look at that video, that video technically summarizes everything I did for the past eight years. Amazing. All the things I learned, Crazy. all the techniques, all the video editing techniques, or even presenting techniques. Wow, wow. So now from wrestling a little bit to retro gaming, yes. do you have like a special love to retro? Yes, that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I love. And that's why the Abdullah topic was so interesting because a lot of the games I mentioned in that video are old games. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, how do you find all these, I would say, retro stuff? Like every time I come in, you find like there's something from Japan, from the States, a cartridge or a game. I mean, what's the process? Uh, it takes a long time and I've been collecting for a long time. That's why I decided to go and do retro game videos because it was the easiest thing for me. Like I already had a small collection back then and when I started, but now it grew. And again, I just look for these weird like stuff 
all around the world. And like you mentioned, Japan. You can go in Japan and find a sea of weird things, especially in gaming, right. that no one has heard of. That, For me, that's a very interesting thing when you're talking about something that nobody knows of. It's not common, but here's the trick. How do you present it in a presentable way that someone who's never heard of that thing would be interested in just basically just watching the video, okay. not, not necessarily going and playing the video or right. buying the game. Let me ask you this. Now, as you've been doing this YouTube channel for such a long time, what does it mean to you at this point? Uh, it means everything to me. Like, I learned a lot. I didn't expect to learn a lot. That's the thing. Mm. Uh, because even before I started, you know, uh, I, I was a hobby of taking uh, photography, uh, videography. So, but that didn't help me. Like, the techniques are different. So, it was definitely a learning experience and still is. Mm. But every day you learn something new and technology keeps changing, so you right. have to keep up. Right. I can only right now see you being your own NFT. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> like, like you're going to be like this unique thing happening and like, I'm going to be the first to buy it and, you know, I'm going to resell it again in a higher price. <laughs> like whether it's a logo or, or something like that, it's like I'm taking that, <laughs> definitely. What is your favorite game, man? <laughs> My favorite game, uh, a lot of people, when they ask me that, they expect me to say like this big triple A game that's Call a big Duty, budget Assassin's game. Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, Resident Evil, and no? You know, no, I love to stick with the basics. Okay. Mario and Sonic, <laughs> I can play them every day, <laughs> I'm a day, Sonic all fan day. all the way, yeah. 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 I stick with the basics. They're really, really good games, and mm. they're the games that inspired a lot of other games, you know? Oh, man. Look, Mario's doing great. Sonic. And the, on the other hand, I think we're going to see a relaunch for the games as well. Yeah. And now the new movie coming up, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, I'm, I'm looking forward to that big time. It's going to be a crazy thing. So what's your, what's your expectations? For the movie, um, it's, I don't think uh, it was made for me in mind, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, that's why I stick with the old games. Right. If the new game is not good, if the movie is not good, I can always go back to the old games and play. Amazing. Sonic 3 is your favorite, I would say, out of the Sonic games? Sonic 2. Sonic 2? Yes. Really? Okay. And Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic Adventures 2. Oh man, I, I used to ace that game all the time. You know, like, you know all, even the, the first stage, I would get an S rank. You know, sliding down pretty much from the helicopter all the way down to the city. And the music, it, the direction and the direction the producer of the game just made a remarkable thing going on with there. Kind of getting on the vibes. See, that's why I like your vibes. <laughs> it takes me there all the time. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of challenges with a channel like yours and other people trying to pretty much be a niche. So as you've reached to a good achievement right now, and people know you for being pretty much a reference, I would say an educator in the pop culture, wrestling, and gaming scene. And only that historian maybe at some point, okay. very intelligent, very intellectual, very articulated with the way you present stuff. So what's the future for you right now? Well, the future, I think uh, the after the Abdullah the Butcher video and the new channel, which is in English, this is my first you know, steps in doing English content. I think that told me exactly where my trajectory should go. Okay. And listening to you right now also tells me exactly where I should No, man, I I, the thing is you're so good in your bilingual. So whether it's Arabic or English, you have a great command in both worlds at this point. So do you think pretty much right now you go want to go international or you want to focus more on the regional scene? No, definitely I'll stick with the regional, but mm. any video that I will uh, produce in the English channel, I'll try to, you know, mirror the experience over here. Like there are a lot of English channels out there doing the same topics I'm going to be doing probably. I want it to be from the experience of someone from Bahrain, from the region, because okay. we all play this, the same games, we all play, the, we all watch the same movies, but everybody's experience is different, I mm. figure. So I want to project that to the world, I guess. Okay, after let's say more than eight years of experience being a YouTuber, an educator, you know, a pillar of the Bahrain pop culture scene, what advice would you give young YouTubers or content creators? Thank you for the praise. I'm loving the word pillar now. <laughs> it's my favorite word. And so advice is uh, don't copy. A lot of people copy and I was probably going to do that at the start. Uh, it was easy to copy someone and do the same topics. But you can always take the same exact topic, the ex same exact game, and look at it from a completely different perspective. And people want to see that because 
the, it's on YouTube especially, it's always repetitive. It's a lot of the same content, different people mm. and different presenters, but it's all the same presentation. They're all showing you the same thing. Mm. So look at it from a different angle. Okay. So just don't copy, be yourself, have fun, learn, and just keep going. Yep. If I would want to ask you about what is that one thing that kept you consistent all these years? Because, you know, we've seen a lot of channels being themselves, having their own topics, but the moment they see that they put a lot of effort, hours and hours and hours of their lives, like cutting off themselves from social life and all that, because editing a video can take a lot of time, right? And putting all the information in, and yeah, it's just a lot of work. What would make you go consistent in producing YouTube channel? Because we've seen a lot of channels just die in the first three or four months, maybe even a year, and then say they give up, that's it. But you kept going, so what was that for you? To be honest, it was a lot of times I would do a topic that's for me. Like, from the start, I know, and I tell myself, nobody's gonna watch this. This, this is just for me. Okay. It's something in my head, let it out in the world. If, if uh, somebody watches it and likes it, they like it. If not, okay. I like it. So, <laughs> and because it's easy to follow the trend, especially with on YouTube. Oh yeah, man. So that's what I do. Like, and I, I'm always surprised because a lot of the videos I make for myself, like not all of them, but one of them will like pop and it will get big and a lot of people like it. And I'm like surprised. Like the Pepsi Man video. I yeah. made that for me. <laughs> I didn't think a lot of people would like it. All right. Yeah, well, well actually, it was a good video. Yeah, I, I was surprised. <laughs> you were surprised. <laughs> yeah. Well, Iyad, this won't be the last time we see you here on Bahrain now, definitely. But, you know, after your next report, maybe on, on another wrestler or another game, pretty much we're going to bring you here and just have an open talk about it. All right? Well, Iyad, again, we're so proud to have you here. You are one of the people pretty much helped Bahrain when it comes to gaming and pop culture and retro gaming to have a transition to what it is today. And I'm sure the future is going to be even better with you. So please don't leave. <laughs> Stick around. We need you. <laughs> thank you. You humbled me again. This is very humbling. And thank you for the invite and for the interview. And I would say you are there with me as a pillar as well in that transition that. you're mentioning. Definitely, man. And we all remember how it was before gaming was kind of seen as something, you know, I would say negative. Right. And today it's like everywhere, it's, everywhere you it's look. It's a career to some people even. It is, it is. Well, thank you so much for joining us right here on Bahrain Now. It's thank been a great much. talk. Thank you very much. Much pleasure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Iyad, a person pretty much you really need to follow when it comes to retro gaming, wrestling, and a lot of fun content. All that took place right here in an interview on Bahrain Now. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't have enough of her. As here in the studio, we have Louise Ulan, who will be talking to us about her vegan Everest base camp experience. Well, good evening. How are you? Hi. I feel like it's been forever since we've seen each other. It's just like last week. It literally was. <laughs> <laughs> literally. How you been? Yeah, really good. Really good. Amazing, amazing. Now, last time it's about the Dragon Ball. This time it's about your base camp Everest experience. Tell us about that. Well, um, it's basically a lesson in being careful when you shoot your mouth off. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> happened? What did you do? <laughs> well, someone asked me in a very casual setting, I was turning 50 quite soon, and they said, what are you going to do for your 50? Of thinking, mm. a party, an elegant dinner. No, I think I'll do base camp. Base camp. I've never hiked before. So what sparked the idea? I really don't know. Okay. It literally just jumped into my brain and I thought I want to do something that's an experience. Right. Not something that is just going to be consumed right. and forgotten about. Interesting. I want something that I'm going to remember and that will set me a challenge as well. Turning 50 is a pretty big mountain in itself, right? Right. So why not go to the world's tallest mountain and have a look at that? And get yourself on TV again. <laughs> Talk about it. <laughs> Wasn't even on the agenda at the time. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So I just set about doing it. All right, all mm -hmm. right, that's beautiful. So you decided to do it, you went for it, and it happened, and now we're talking about it. It's awesome. How long it took you to reach there? 
It took 11 days, 11 days. all oh, up wow. from the time that we landed in the world's most dangerous airport of Lukla, Ooh. up in the Himalayas. Mm. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the aeroplane propellers had little rubber bands and you could oh literally God. hear them oh zinging God. along. And the company that I went with cannot fault them at all. Absolutely to a T, super, super safe. Mm. So we did a lot of acclimatization days, which means that we would spend time in a village at that altitude to give the body time to process that mm. and become acclimatized right. to the air and to the weather. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So we actually spent three days where other tour companies would go and take you a day. So we had health checks in the morning, we had health checks in the evening, and these guys were on us every single step, literally every single step. No way. Yeah, it wow. was fantastic. Three days just to get yourself, you know, accustomed and accumulated, like you said, to the actual experience, and another 11 days to the actual experience itself. Well, those three days came part way through the journey. We would okay. spend at least one night minimum in each village, right. one to two, and then when we reached above 4,000, then we were actually going to be spending the three. And that's when I started to have the acclimatization issues. So I started to get the altitude symptoms mm. and sicknesses occurring. Okay. So the funny thing that in my research, so I trained for a solid year, physically and doing the research, Here. trained for a solid year. Wow. Yeah. Honestly, I overtrained. Okay. Yeah. So physically, dare I say, it was pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so when I actually got there, it wasn't so taxing physically. What I didn't realize is when you have low blood pressure, such as I do, that affects you. Mm. So I started to guppy. Okay. You ever heard of that term? Not really. I want you to tell me more about it. When you're actually doing the hike and you start to gasp for air. Oh, wow. Yeah, so when you take a, a goldfish out of the water, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it starts to, <gasps> okay. to gasp for the air. I added three teaspoons of salt to my dinner that night and my water every day, which is three to four liters every day my of God. water. Oh, my God. Absolutely cured it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. What an experience. What a story. Yeah. What a story. <laughs> and we're just starting. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So now, how high was that? Okay. Oh, you <laughs> I can't told prepare. you I don't remember numbers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. 17,600 feet was Whoa. the base camp and 5,364 meters. Okay, I need to Google that on my I can't well. believe you're checking my work, man. <laughs> oh, right. no, okay, well, you know, I do trust you, that's true. I mean, you, you no, <laughs> really, you should check it. <laughs> man, that's, that's pretty high. It is pretty high, and it's pretty darn cold. Man. That I was not prepared for. Physically, mm. I trained for it. Mm. Mentally, I thought I was in the right headspace for it. Right. And my phone died. So I would get maybe 60 seconds of the phone working. Oh wow. I'd load it up, podcasts, music, <laughs> books, because you're walking Dead. sometimes up to seven hours a day. It's like, yep, not a problem. I'll just podcast my way up there. It Nothing. died for six and seven hours. It's just you and yourself with your own thoughts. Yep, it was the longest walking meditation ever. Amazing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do if I ever get myself into that kind of situation, but I think you need to try when we find out. You do get through it. It right. was the cold, though, that was the real challenge. So mm. when you get to the little tea houses in the villages along the way, they're literally made out of just plywood. Okay. Often with broken windows, definitely with drafts. Mm. And when I started to experience the altitude sickness or the symptoms, I woke up one morning with a thumping headache, thought, not a problem. Mm. I'll drink a liter of water, easy done. Reached out of my fantastic sleeping oh bag. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about yeah. those right now. Um, went for my water, which I kept prepared the night before, and went, that's it's just oh, frozen solid. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was minus 16 in my room. Oh God, oh God, mm -hmm. what an experience. Mm. And well, all of that, you've been doing it, you being vegan. Tell me about that. It's like, it's like, did it help you? Did it not? It did help and it's actually encouraged that you don't eat meat or any animal products okay. along the journey. 
because there is no such thing as a refrigeration system. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, the thing is, uh, a lot of people still have like kind of speculations about the whole thing with veganism. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. knowing this and knowing that you actually been through this experience being vegan, it's like, wow, it's a big question mark going on right there. So, it actually worked out for you. Absolutely. So I had the advantage there because okay. I was already used to the food. Right. That wasn't a problem. Okay. The issue came about when I was actually researching to gather my equipment together. All right. Yeah. So along the way, being vegan, absolutely fine. Happy days, carry on. The equipment, I had to order in a lot from overseas and specialty providers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, speaking of equipment, what's mm -hmm. happening here? Alrighty, well my two main pieces, which you just cannot live without, the sleeping bag right. takes us to minus 18 degrees, which Ooh, means wow. you can sleep in there in minus 18 and be absolutely fine. Just no organ that. dysfunction at all. Okay. Right. <laughs> wow. So traditionally your sleeping bags are made out of down or feather mm. or something of that nature. This is completely vegan. Every single piece of my equipment, from my socks to my bags. Vegan equipment? Vegan equipment. What does that mean? Well, there's no feathers that is in here. Okay. There's no wool in my socks or my uh, leggings or gloves. This hat is not wool. Feel how warm that is. And so, so what is it? Just me. I'm sure it's unicorn dust. <laughs> unicorn <laughs> dust? Okay. And pinky dust along with that. Wow. <laughs> I mean, okay, interesting. And the inside of my jacket here uh, looks like it's lamb's wool, okay. but it's really not. So they're all man-made synthetic fibers. Interesting. So, yeah. I mean, was it like a thing for you to do that or it was like recommended for you to actually go with even vegan equipment? I chose to do that. I okay. didn't want to undertake this and then throw out the window the lifestyle that I have. So my shoes are not leather. My house predominantly I mean you've got to keep in mind that my husband is not a vegan mm. so he likes certain things and that's his choice and you know that's cool too so everything in my lifestyle I do not buy anything that has come from an animal okay, okay. and that's my choice and the best of it is I mean with technology now we don't need to so um, this company actually does this little thing called Omnitech and if you see okay. these little I call them the little disco balls. You <laughs> turn them inside out and you've got a Saturday night you out. Have there a you party, go. Okay. <laughs> these things are so toasty warm. I wore these in the weekend here in Bahrain. All right. All outdoors right. for a barbecue at night. And it was fantastic. Well, they toasty, look really good, actually. Warm. Pretty much. I think we're going to have another episode just about the vegan lifestyle. We could do that. <laughs> we can definitely do that. <laughs> now, you've done this amazing achievement, I would say. Like a life changing moment just took place right there for you, definitely. But what are the challenges that you faced with all of that? I mean, it all sounds inspirational and stuff like that, but there was a moment I'm sure that you were very challenged. So, can okay, you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, honey, that's been my life. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? Uh, you know, a lot of times people talk about this as being a life changing experience. Mm. And if I'm being absolutely honest, mm. I didn't have that. Okay. I think that the reason is you need to ascertain where you're coming from yourself mm. before you undertake this journey. If you're quite settled with who you are and you've got your ducks in a row, you're able to do this without too much of a shift cognitively. Right. Okay. So there wasn't any aha or, you know, I could write a book mm. type moment about this journey at all. There was a lot of introspective work, Okay. obviously, as the phone died, <laughs> walking meditation. Oh, wow. And the biggest challenge psychologically and cognitively was definitely with the cold. I got to the point on the trek, on the journey, where I wanted to do the summit, but I literally was having my pinky fingers moving apart from my hands. No way. It would take an hour for me to get dressed in the morning, as I would have to heat my hands back up in my sleeping bag to tie a shoelace back into the sleeping bag, heat them up tie the other shoelace. An hour to put on the gear. That was insurmountable. It was worth it to sleep on the glacier, so not everybody gets to sleep at Everest Base Camp. There's been two moments in my life and this has just kicked off what was number one to now be number two. The top moment in life was being under the stars with that mountain, just looking down at you, 
you're hearing the rock landslides oh, wow. all around you. Oh, wow. You're literally on top of a glacier with rocks, and that's your tent and your sleeping equipment and everything. And you can hear the glacier cracking underneath you. Such a crisp sound. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. I think I know what I'm going to do when I'm going to be 50. <laughs> <laughs> going to go with that. Any last words you would like to pretty much tell your viewers right now? If you are considering doing this, mm -hmm. definitely be prepared. Read the blogs, listen to the podcasts, hit me up. Happy to share with you. If you want to do it vegan, you definitely want to hit up a list of where to get your equipment from. And they're out right. there. There's a lot of people doing it. This isn't anything new. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, whew, that was very inspirational. It's such a fun talk. So thank you so much for being with us right here on Bahrain Now. Hey, thanks for having me oh, back. Definitely, definitely. I think we're going to have you back as, as well for our third uh, segment, that's for sure. So in the vegan bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> More about that. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Champion, thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the amazing inspirational talk with Louise right here on Bahrain Now. If you want to go to the Everest, well, she will be the person to talk to. All that took place right here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap for another great episode of Bahrain Now. As usual, be sure to reach out to us on our social media accounts shown below and stay tuned for more exciting segments on Bahrain Now. This was Barah Abdullah. Till next time, Bahrain, goodbye and God bless.